When I opened it Saturday, I had 44 10 ounce bars and 11 5 ounce bars, so they couldn't get any more from a wholesaler. Hmm. I had 81 ounce bars and I had an almost full monster box. Okay. Yep. All of that is gone. Every bit of that went out the door yesterday. In one day? One day. The demand is so high right now, mm -hmm. the supply is so constrained um, that I don't think the COMEX is ever going to be able to recover in the paper market, and they're going to have to fall in line with supply and demand. The spread, it changed. It was, a, I think, a dime between the bid and the ask, and now it's a dollar for silver. It changed. Really? That really? means that a lot of wholesalers don't trust the market. They don't trust this move. Are we going to see the market manipulators in precious metals finally get rocked by that Reddit rabble? I'm going to bring in the best local coin shop dealer I know, the one and only Tim Marshner of the Coin and Stamp Shop in New Hampshire to let me know what he thinks of this craziness that's going on. Hey, welcome, Tim. Thanks so much for jumping on this Google Meet with me. It's uh, Sunday night, quarter past eight. You probably have more important things to be doing than talking to Yankee, <laughs> but I appreciate well, it. Well, <laughs> I, I definitely have a different schedule when we have weather like this. Um, my house was built in the 1760s. Oh. Um, it's about as tight as a barn. And um, I have a wood furnace at one end of the house and an oil furnace at the other end of the house. And if I don't help the oil furnace out, it dies on a regular basis. Oh. So uh, for the last uh, three or four days, we've been tossing uh, trees into that wood furnace just to keep uh, oh a little goodness. bit of heat in the house. Um, and we but gotta, I, yeah. I never quite recovered until spring. You can see that I'm wearing a heavy jacket. You are. Now. <laughs> and I'm in my store and it's probably 68 degrees in here, oh, but man, I can't office. get used to it until, uh, until wait, spring. Wait a minute. It's quarter past eight. What are you doing in your coin shop? You're not open, are you? <laughs> no, no. I, I um, have lots of paperwork to do uh, just from yesterday. Mm. And this week was uh, pretty brutal all around. Oh, well, I want to ask you about this. Uh, first, let me set it up because this has been an amazing week. Last... Last week, we saw some just insane action in the markets, mostly prompted by this cadre of Reddit rebels, uh, Wall Street bets guys. That oh, are... yeah, that, that is also linked to the, um, to the fall in uh, silver and gold last week and the current rise yeah. that started a few hours ago. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get to that. I just, for those watching, I, I'm sure you know that these guys have been, and gals, I'm sure they're <laughs> guys and gals, uh, are just trying to teach the big boys that are shorting companies that, uh, frankly, I think are in trouble, like, you know, GameStop, BlackBerry, uh, AMC, you know, companies that probably yeah. deserve maybe to be shorted, but they're trying to make them pay big time. I last week... There were some hedge funds that lost billions of dollars because deservedly of deservedly so. Yes. De deservedly so. I understand that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yep. And the rumor was that they had set their sights on silver. And the subreddit uh, feed there, they've been talking about um, the potential for silver to, you know, hit a thousand dollars an ounce, or whatever. They're they're basically trying to. Uh, you know, take on the shorts or naked shorts that exist in the uh, precious metals market. What do you think of all this? Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. It's um, it's been artificially manipulated for so long. Um, I think that the you know possibly Wall Street is uh, has woken up to the fact that um, they can't control everything and they can't pick the winners and losers because mm. there are still a lot of individuals out there who resent their activities. Um, I, you know, you and most of your followers are probably too young to remember this, but uh, <laughs> in 1987, uh, the crash in 1987 started on a Thursday, yep. um, continued on Friday. And those of us who had great stocks and had no intention of selling them uh, bailed out on Monday. On Black Monday, yes. um, it was obvious that the market was going to collapse. And... But the market at that time in 1987 was run by individual investors. So, you know, it was, it was a, um, I guess, a, 
a, a herd uh, appreciation for certain stocks and you know a bunch of day traders around at that time mm -hmm. and uh, they could really control the markets but when everybody got spooked uh, everybody sold out and the market collapsed it's not like that anymore mm -hmm. um, there are a whole group of people in this country who get to pick the winners and losers and hedge funds are in that group um, the Democratic Party is in that group and this current president is in that group. Um, Facebook and Twitter and uh, Google, YouTube and uh, Amazon, they're in that group. They all think they have the God-given right to pick winners and losers. Mm. Uh, the mainstream media is in that group. Mm. Uh, the financial media is in that group. So, you know, if a hedge fund wants to pick a loser, um, you know, they... Uh, start rumors. They uh, they they key, pick on the key um, followers of the markets and people who make recommendations. And they instead of a strong buy, you might have on a on a GameStop. It's now a buy, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a hold, mm -hmm. and then maybe a moderate sell, and then a strong sell. But in that process, what they're trying to do is set the stage to, for a major short. Uh, they also have the conclusion of the financial media. Financial media might write a report, let's say uh, somebody who's well known in picking winners and losers, uh, writes an article and says, uh, well, these are the top 10 stocks that are overvalued. And right at the top of the list is GameStop. All right. And so they set the stage for everybody who owns GameStop to get, get spooked. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when they short, you know, you see, uh, on the ticker, you see 10,000 shares go by and a 10,000 share sell, and then a 15,000 share sell. Um, you know, then everybody starts to dump the stock. But in the in the first place, they've got to pump that stock up yeah. to get out of, to a place where they can make a huge profit by by shorting it. Mm -hmm. um, that's happened a lot of times in silver. Uh, specifically, last time it was almost comical was last March. When they had the, you know, the paper price for silver went down to twelve dollars and fifty cents, you couldn't buy it anywhere for less than nineteen dollars. So you know, people weren't getting spooked; they were just the demand was just going way up. Um, the folks that read it um, knew that this it could be accomplished just by getting everybody on board and stopping the the uh, short or stopping the the profit associated with the short short. And, you know, I think the Game, GameStop became the, uh, the most prominent one yeah, because it's, the poster child. it's worth probably worth, you know, less than five dollars. Right. It, it, it is. It's not worth what you're seeing for valuations. But how about silver? I mean, this is the most manipulated, shorted, uh, uh, you know, asset on the planet. This thing has been so incredibly held down. Do you think that this posse has the power to take on comex could it really spark a the end if you will of uh, of what we've seen for you know decades and decades this incredible naked short position manipulation whatever you want to call it or would it take institutional investors to really pile on comex isn't gamestop <laughs> okay yeah, well, that's right. And, and the, the problem with Comix is they don't have the physical silver to back up any of the trades. And, and the, the deficit is huge. Um, you know, what are they going to do? It'll just make it impossible to delivery. They'll have huge delivery fees and nobody will take delivery. Um, that's not where the problem is for Comix. The, com the, the problem is in the physical market. Mm. Demand is extremely high in the, in the physical market. Mm. And um, whatever happens in the paper market, demand is going to rule. Supply and demand will, will uh, rule the, the metals almost immediately. I think that's it's already started. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about, um, you know, what we thought was going on. And I said, mm -hmm. it looks like positioning to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I, I said that was the, um, it's a lot better if they expect a, a 10 or 20 percent fall in the Dow. Uh, it's better that the Dow starts out at thirty-three thousand, then starts out at twenty-five thousand. So they've been they've been pumping the Dow. I mean, you keep in mind that Wall Street's able to pick winners and losers. Mm -hmm. You said that they don't actually have the metals, and and they're not 
prepared to take, uh, you know, delivery uh, if that is what is uh, asked for, right? I mean, these are, yes. this is, this is the difference too between shorting a stock like GameStop, okay, where, you know, you're you're borrowing the money, you're leveraged up, you're, you're, you, you are going to buy it, but, you you have the uh, ability to, but in this case with Comex, they don't have the ability to get the silver or the gold. Yeah, that was, that's what I was leading up to. Um, you GameStop is a loser, mm -hmm. and uh, you know be just because the the share price even now I don't know if it's in the, over a hundred if it's even stayed there um, is is way overvaluing the, the stock. Mm -hmm. uh, the opposite is true in silver. Uh, silver demand is so high right now and mm -hmm. supply is so constrained um, that I don't think the COMEX is ever going to be able to recover in the paper market and they're going to have to fall in line with supply and demand and that's you know unfortunately for them if they can't make deliveries that's their problem uh, but you know none of the silver that my customers buy or that your your uh, followers hold mm -hmm. comes from the COMEX True. Right. God yeah. forbid that it came from the COMEX, <laughs> we'd all be in deep trouble. Uh, let me give you an example of what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. When I, I opened it Saturday, I had 44 10 ounce bars, and a, a couple of them were uh, these uh, 10 ounce uh, Britannias. Mm -hmm. I had 11 5 ounce bars, so they couldn't get any more from my wholesaler. Mm -hmm. I had 81 ounce bars, and I had an almost full monster box. Okay. Yep. All of that is gone. Every bit of that went out the door yesterday. In one day? One day. Um, including the monster box. Monster box is empty. I have, I think, five coins left out, oh, of, wow. uh, out of a monster box. You got cleared out. Um, but we also, uh, I had somebody come in who bought, because I didn't have any bars left, he bought um, three dozen Morgan dollars at, you know, at the inflated collectible price. I gave him actually a pretty good deal, but um, he was expecting to pay at least thirty dollars a piece, and I gave it to him for twenty-eight. Wow! Um, I had one hundred and forty dollars face value in ninety percent that went out the door. Four tenth ounce uh, American Eagles, three quarter ounce um, their Maple Leafs and Britannias, and uh, let's see several sovereigns. Um, let's see. Two ounces of gold, they were bars, three uh, American Eagles, two Maple Leafs, and one Krugerrand. Gone. All went out the door yesterday. And the ratio is the biggest thing that I noticed tonight. The ratio went down to 62. Yep. Um, you know, we've had many conversations about the ratio. Mm -hmm. I, I used, I've been always saying I, I'd like to see it in the 50s. Mm -hmm. and I think that's where it believe, belongs right now. Mm -hmm. But gold isn't making the same appreciation in this, this short term that silver is. And I think silver is because it's been so manipulated. Uh, and I actually got back to your $30 uh, a couple of hours ago. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I did see but that. I also noticed were... I also noticed a lot of bullion dealers stopping online. The last two weeks, every every other day or so, when people would ask me about my pricing on gold, mm. I'd go to every one of them, you know, Atmex, SD Bullion, JM Bullion, mm -hmm. uh, Money Metals Exchange, uh, Modern Coin Mart, to see what they're selling gold eagles for, because mm -hmm. that was the one that people were having trouble getting. And my prices for the, the 1 to 10 price um, were lower than every single one of them. In some cases, my prices were $100 lower than their prices. Now, the reason for that is um, I go to one wholesaler. He's very aggressive. Um, at the end of last year, when the people who were getting in line for the 2021 Gold mm -hmm. Eagles, mm -hmm. um, he grabbed all the 2020s to get his hands on. And uh, so far, I haven't had any problem getting Gold Eagles from him because he just he put them in a hedge. Mm -hmm. And um, just, he keeps them around, but he puts them in a hedge mm -hmm. so he doesn't mm -hmm. lose money. Okay. Um, I think he still has a pretty good um, commitment to whatever's in that hedge okay. uh, until the big guys start calling him. And when they start calling him, you know, Atmex, Jay and Bully, if they start calling him to see what he has, then we may all be out of luck. I mean, I've beaten everybody's wow. prices with all this stuff that went out the door yesterday. 
but the, those prices are going up. Demand is mm. has never been higher except for last March. <laughs> it was probably a little bit higher. Is, do you think it was? I was going to ask you. Is it comparable? Uh, I, well, the, nobody was selling it last March. <laughs> and, you know, my philosophy is to sell at the current price because I can always buy more at that price. But mm -hmm. as it turned out, that price was probably 7 or $8 above spot. But the amount of product available has become evident to everybody mm -hmm. real soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and my wholesaler has already sent me a message. He said, are you watching this market? <laughs> and, you know, ha, 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 are you watching this market? Um, yep. And he doesn't have much. Mm. I think he he told me when I talked to him on Saturday, he had maybe two monster boxes. He was waiting for delivery of more. Mm. Um, you know, that's that means he sold a ton. That means he in two days, he probably sold 10 or 12 monster boxes. Amazing. And, you know, he's the, the regional distributor for the Boston area. Wow. So, I yeah, I think demand is going to continue up. I think the margins are going to go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the U.S. Mint is the dark horse. Uh, I They have problems now. We don't know how serious those problems are. Mm -hmm. But delivery of vehicles may become uh, a, a serious problem because demand is so high. You know, Tim, I also noticed something that occurred uh, when the markets opened in Asia that uh, maybe this is common, normal, maybe you've seen this before, but the spread, it changed. It was, a, I think, a dime between the bid and the ask, and now it's a dollar for silver. It changed. Really? Yes. You, had <laughs> you not know, noticed I, this? <laughs> I only look at the price I have to pay. I didn't even look at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's 20, right now it's 27.71 for the bid and 28.71 for the ask. That's a dollar. That, that is, that's unusual. That is it? Um, okay. What does it mean? It really is unusual because that means the wholesaler is only willing to pay 27.81. They're only willing to pay that. That's what, the only the only place that the bid and ask is relevant is what dealers have to pay to get it. That's the ask, mm -hmm. and it's what the wholesalers are willing to pay for them to get it. Now, I mm. I think that's going to change. I think the the bid and the ask will both go up, but the they shouldn't be much more than a dime apart. It's a dollar, dude. Um, it's a dollar. Know, it happened about yeah, and that's, two hours that means, ago. Was it that mean? means that a lot of wholesalers don't trust the market? They don't trust this move. Could this expose the short, the naked short positions that are flagrant in our precious metals markets? They could. They definitely could. But I, I noticed uh, on Bloomberg this week, uh, this past week, there were a couple of people who are um, who published the short interest reports who are not publishing them anymore. And they think that their information is being used to counter the market. So they are flat out refusing to publish, uh, publish these uh, short interest reports. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's um, in the metals, you re rely on those to find out which way the, the wind's blowing. And they've stopped. Um, and they stopped. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure how much control the Reddit gang, if you want to call them that, <laughs> um, will have in the markets. But... Keep in mind that COMEX is under a perpetual crisis. It's not that they're going to face a crisis anytime soon. Mm -hmm. They're always in crisis. It wouldn't and, take much um, maybe to, to nudge it. Push I, them over. I think they would just shut things down. They'd mm -hmm. just shut down deliveries, period, and say, you know, it's tough luck. If institutional investors, if uh, retail investors, if the word gets out that, wow, precious metals are are severely undervalued they are incredibly shorted and the price is going up maybe that would be enough too because personally i don't think it's enough i don't think it's enough for just a small cadre of of rebels to do this i think it needs more traction again this is not some stock that's struggling like blackberry or something so i don't know if it's enough no you're absolutely you're absolutely right keep in mind what the fundamental reason for that is this is america we were founded on free enterprise, and free enterprise will ultimately rule the day unless um, this current people in power, unless they, they are somehow able to institute government control. Mm. Um, these markets will continue to be free, and supply and demand will ultimately rule. Mm. And I, you know, everybody has to remember that when it comes to the metals, 
supply and demand is the most important aspect. When demand is as high as it is, if the supply uh, starts to fall apart, the metals are going to soar. The hedge funds need to wake up. Mm. Right now, they're able to pick the winners and losers, and that's not right. Wow. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate you uh, getting on the call with me. Well, it's been very interesting, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure this week is going to be very interesting almost every day. All right. Thanks a lot, bud. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. That's Tim's take. It was pretty enlightening. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I can't believe how many people watch my videos that aren't subscribed to me. So definitely subscribe to Yankee Stacking. Hit the bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And as usual, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.